what I wanted to do this morning is to continue with the discussions that we had in class and to start to talk to you a little bit about how one thinks about these milestones. And I know that some of you probably feel like now he tells us after you went up and put your milestones up on the board. But quite honestly, the further you are along thinking about what your milestones might be and how it can work, um, um, what I was saying was that um, the, the further you are along, the better or the easier it'll be to develop these going forward. But there's a real um, uh, there's a real art to coming up with the right set of milestones, and and these are milestones for you, for your team, for your partners, for your investors. And what they're about is they're trying to show that the that, that you can reduce what you have to accomplish as a business to a series of points in time and accomplishments, milestones, that if they're all accomplished, you will look back on your business and it will have succeeded, okay? And you want that set of things to be relatively small, somewhere around the, in the, in the range of 10 milestones. You want them to be relatively a uh, small number, and you also want them to be all-inclusive. In particular, you want them to include the very hardest things that you have to do. Not the easy ones, the hard ones. The reason is, if you finish the hard ones and have accomplished them, then your business is well on its way to success. If you finish the easy ones but ignore the hard ones, you could hit all your milestones and still fail as a business. So you want them to be relatively complete and a relatively small number. <clears throat> the third thing that I will add is that you want them to be very um, close in. More, the more milestones you have in the first 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, six months, and a year, the better. You might have one or two milestones that extend beyond one year, but it's mostly the upfront stuff because you want to know that you're making progress and that you're going to succeed. That's kind of the, um, the challenge that, you're, that we're after as we go about uh, doing this. So let's talk about them. We want to talk about what they are, how you use them, and then what you would include in your plan. And I'll go through that in this discussion this morning. And keeping in mind that what you want to understand is how you would, how you can look at ten things, say, and say when those are checked off, that's it. The business is a success. <clears throat> You're not missing anything. Like, for example, you can't have a series of milestones that don't include having a product launched, because you can achieve all your other milestones <clears throat> and have no product. Makes no sense. Excuse me. So that's what we're going to talk about. Whoops, back it up. So, what is it? Well, this is, this is how you judge your milestones, how good they are. They have to be clear, well-defined. You know what it means. It's not some, uh, some uh, unclear, ambiguous strategic event like we're going to open um, a store. It has to be more specific about where the store is, what kind of store it is, you know, that sort of thing. It has to be clear. Of course, if the store is well defined in your plan, then opening a store is fine. Um, it has to be measurable. It has to happen at a point in time. It has to be quantitative in some way that you can say, yes, it happened. Yes, the store opened its doors. We had our grand opening. It worked. Then you don't have to worry about having all the stuff that had to happen for you to open the door. Once you open the door, all that other stuff has happened. You now have an operating uh, location. That's measurable or how many units you sold, how much money you made, that sort of thing. And it has to be discreet. It has to be clear, either yes or no. I made it or I didn't make it. That's what you're, you're after with the plan, with your milestones. So when, I, when you list them or talk about them uh, in the future presentations, but also in your business plan, the written business plan, make sure that they satisfy the well-defined, measurable, and discreet criteria. 
each one, each one of them. Then you also want to talk about how you, what, what the milestones are good for. And what they're trying to do is eliminate the risks in your business. Eliminate the technology risk in your business. The, um, the, uh, uh, the coat check, bolt, coat check business. Technology risk is getting the app up and running and test it. That is, it works. The application that you're going to use works. You have to have a milestone that says, we don't have a technology problem anymore. Solved, done, complete, finished, it is done. We have it, we have the application, it works, right? That eliminates some technology risk. You also have market risk. That is, does anybody care? In the same example, the coat rack business, the coat check business, um, are there people that are going to use this? How do you have a milestone about technology risk or about market risk? What well, may be a survey that's done that confirms the willingness of people to pay for this. Um, it doesn't really eliminate all the market risk because the survey doesn't say that you're going to actually have customers, but it eliminates a lot of it or some of it. And then when actually when you have repeat customers, say you uh, a, a good milestone would be 20% of your customers are repeat customers. What that means is not only did you provide the service, they found value in the service, but they come back for it again and you're getting some loyalty out of them. That is a reduction of market risk. If you say that you achieve 20% of your customers being return customers, that is a demonstration that your business has a long-term value proposition that customers come back for. Eliminate some of the market risk. Operating risk, you have um, a situation where you're um, with the, uh, the sports video business, for example, operating risk might be that you have a, uh, you have gotten your trucks up and running, the trucks are, 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 are fitted out and ready to go, and you've solved the problem of getting warm, um, confusing my businesses here. Um, in terms of the sports video business, you've solved the problem of, um, of getting the videos online and operating and being able to be distributed, right? So that's, that's operating risk. How do you handle all of this traffic onto your site? How do you keep this stuff, this, uh, how do you get all these things, upload them, make sure that they're visible, make sure that whole process, the operations of the process works? That's, uh, that's another element or an aspect that you want to make sure that you work through. You might have legal risk. For example, a restaurant, you have the problem of making sure that you have all of your permits and all of that sort of thing going. Um, and so you would work on what eliminating the need for any sort of, uh, of safety violations or whatever by satisfying any legal issues that you might have. So getting all of your permits is a good milestone particularly if, they're, if you're in an industry that has that requirement. Uh, financial risk, a milestone every business should have is getting your first financing or closing your first financing. That's a good, uh, good example of a financial risk. Another one is that your business is breaking even. That is, it's bringing in enough cash to pay for what it pays. It's bringing in enough revenue to pay for its operations. Uh, yes, uh, Rob, did you want to me to turn your mic on or do you want me to do you want to type a chat I'll turn your mic on oh, what happened to you oh typing oh okay oh well okay um, and the last item is strategic risk and this usually means that there's a competitor involved in some way um, getting a patent on a product uh, for example, the uh, the uh, uh, bolt checking checkout might um, might have a patent on some part of its processor, its software. Uh, getting that patent issued is a good uh, milestone. Um, other uh, possibilities would be uh, of of strategic risk would be that your competitors lower their price and you meet their price and you lower it and you continue to have growing market share even though a competitor is entered into your market. That's another potential. Uh, strategic risk. So there's a series of the way to think about your various um, milestones is that they they 
encompass the whole business and aspects of it that right now you think you know what you're going to do become you know what you're going to do and you're doing it right that's the way that you want to be thinking about that what they allow you to do is evaluate how much progress you're making towards getting your business to the point where it is successful and what they're doing is when you achieve them you actually lower the risk quotient the amount of risk that remains in your business that investors have to worry about for example the um, the in whenever you do a financial evaluation and investors looking at what the possible returns on your business are whenever you're uh, they evaluate you and you haven't done anything yet you haven't hired anybody you have no product you have no market you have all these things these are all risks and they take that into account when they do the financial modeling of what your business might be worth someday and that increases the discount rate that they use to bring your cash flows in your forecasts down to present value whenever you eliminate one of those risks you're actually reducing the discount rate that's used because you have proven that you have you can do something that months ago you thought you could do or you promised you could do but you couldn't necessarily demonstrate the ability to do it and given that you have the opportunity to uh, to increase the value and what happens in your business is you actually step up your valuation when you achieve milestones so in the case of Bolt uh, coat check again when you have the software updated and it works tested you are increasing the value of your business because that risk is no longer there now there are other risks so the value is still discounted considerably but when you get your up your trucks up and running and so you have and you can operate them and you know how to do all of that and it's it's working successfully again you reduce the risk in your business and so up the value of the business again once you have these 20% repeat customers, you had market risk, but now you're pretty sure that once you get customers, you'll keep those customers. So you've reduced your market risk. And so you've, again, stepped up the value of your business again. And that's how you go from being a high-risk startup to a successful business and attract investors at higher and higher valuations as you go through the process of achieving your milestones. And that's what milestones are all about. You, tip, you typically want to go for a financing right after you achieved a milestone or just when you're getting started on working on a milestone, when the, when the speculation about your possibility is as high as possible. The thing you never want to do is have to go for financing right before you achieve a milestone because the, the, the risk is still in your business, but you've done a lot of the work. So you're going to end up getting a lower valuation than you would get perhaps six weeks later once you achieve that 20% return rate on customers. Because now you've taken risk out of your business and your business is more valuable. Investors will be willing to pay more for your business. So there's a lot of timing associated with this, uh, with hitting milestones. And they're there for a reason. They're there because they reflect the fact that as you achieve them, your business gets more and more valuable. They're not just for show, they actually are money in the bank when you achieve them. That's the way you really want to think about this, okay? Think about your, uh, your milestones. So let's try one. Let's try a little poll here. Don't know that we've done this before, but we go to the analysis box here. And there is a poll at the top of your screen, I hope. This says that you've signed a contract for a call center. And it's an experience, it's for, uh, to improve your customer service experience for your application, okay? What kind of risk are you eliminating when you sign a contract with a respected call center uh, to provide smartphone service for your customers? Uh, I think this should work. Click on the button that you think is the kind of risk that you are taking out of your business when you do this. I'll give you a few minutes to vote. More votes, please. 
Come on. Everybody has to vote. We only have seven votes. I can see this. I know who's voting. Come on, we only have a few votes here. More. Keep going. I could wait all morning. Need some more votes. Please. More. Yes, Elena. You're going to type me a chat? Oh. Sorry. Okay, Elena. All right. Maybe some of you are also in that situation. All right. I understand. That's pretty funny. Okay. Um, let me say, show you what we got. I hope I can figure this out. All right. Can you see this? Let's see. What's wrong with that? Why isn't this working? Whoops. Hold on. All right. Can you see this? You guys see the answer? Uh, yes, yeah, Sharon. Are you typing me a note? Okay, good. All right. You can see that our majority, or, or we split between operating risk and technology risk. And the answer to this is an interesting is interesting because I can understand why you went with technology, right? It's talking about smartphone apps and call center, you know, platforms and the like. But what's different here is that you have the problem in your operation of running a customer service center or handling customer service, and you've signed a contract to outsource that to somebody else. That's really not a technical technical risk. It's, it's someone else is able to do it. It's been done, done all the time. So therefore, what you have here is a situation of reducing operating risk. Once you've gotten your customer service handle, handled, that's one of your operational problems. And you've solved that now by putting a milestone in place and achieving that milestone of a contract. And so you've eliminated some of your operating risk. Customer service, call center support, all the quality and customer care and all that is handled for your system, right? That's an operating issue. So in this particular case, what we have is um, you've eliminated operating risk, not technology, okay? Let's look at another one. See if we get this one to work. I have to put this and post this. Okay, in this case, a survey of customers has, all right, um, Sharon, are you typing? Okay, your hand is up, Sharon. Your hand is up. Okay, in this case, we're saying a survey of customer demonstrates that they have a willingness to pay 3 to $5 to download your app. Is this a technology risk, a market risk, an operating risk, a financial risk, a strategic risk, or a no vote? Okay, please, vote. We have, uh, not everybody's voted. You gotta play the game here. Gotta play the game. Okay, come on, a few more votes. We need more votes. By the way, I know who's voting. This counts as class participation, folks. Okay, that's one of the advantages of doing this online. It's all tracked. Okay. All right, let's talk about it. What is this? What kind of risk do we have here? Let's see if I can broadcast these results. There we go. Can you see that? Raise your hand if you can see it. Can you see it? Raise your hand. Ah, 
All right, put your hands down. I know some of you. I didn't. I didn't close the poll, so you, some of you could change your uh, your votes, which I see is happening, which is all fine. Uh, the answer here is yes. It's market risk. We're not sure when you you come up with this brilliant idea for an app or whatever it is you're going to do that any customer will be willing to pay. After you take a survey, you're still not sure, but you know at least, particularly if it's a well done survey by a reputable a reputable market research firm. You have a better sense that indeed you're going to uh, have some interest in customers and some willingness to pay, which is more than you had when you just developed your your project. Okay, so that's um, that's why having a survey as a milestone lowers your market risk. You do have customers that look like they're going to be able to be willing to pay for your product. Now, some of you said it's it's a financial risk because of the pricing. That's true. There is some financial risk associated with it. But typically, we refer to this sort of risk of customers' willingness to pay as a market risk. Financial risk is generally on the, on the financial health of the company, its balance sheet, and its cash flow, and its margins. So you can make the case a little bit here for financial risk. But by and large, it's market risk. In terms of strategic risk, um, if the strategy of your company was based upon having a market for this, uh, then you could see long term there might be strategic risk. But remember what I said in the very beginning: strategic risk usually means there's a custom or there's a competitor out there that you're worrying about, and this really doesn't describe the competition. Okay, so that's uh, that's an example. This is a, an example of market risk. Let's try another one. Oops. Hold it. All right. Now we're talking about you get your patent issued. You get your uh, you have a patent on your uh, video. Um, platform for the sports video business. You have that platform. What kind of risk are you eliminating in this particular case? Am I showing you these? No. Okay. Is this when you get a patent? Is that technology risk, market risk, operating risk, financial risk, strategic risk, or no vote? You can't do no vote. That's for me. Do more. Come on. You guys are getting gun shy now. I can see that. We have uh, many more people in the class here than are voting. But we're getting there. Okay. Let me show you what we got. I'm going to end the poll and show you the results. And you can see that the majority of us feel that it's strategic risk, which is the correct answer. Um, the reason you want a patent is to protect your technology, your intellectual property from competitors. And that has long-term strategic implications, right? Um, the technology risk, getting the patent doesn't help technology risk at all because you already have the technology. It works. You've gotten it patented. What having it patented does for you is it eliminates or reduces the risk that a competitor will come in and do the same thing you're doing and undercut your pricing or undercut your value proposition. Right? So that's what a patent does for you. We had a few people that thought it was technology risk. I mentioned that. Some people thought it was operating risk. Um, operating risk is really what you have to do on a day-to-day -day basis in order to support your customers. Um, having a patent really doesn't change that. It changes the position you have vis-a-vis -vis competitors. Uh, long term, it could affect your financial returns, but because of strategic positioning is the reason that would, uh, would be the case. So in this one, this is a, an example of strategic risk. Now remember, for all of your businesses, you should have a milestone for any one of these, for all of five of these areas, including, I don't have it listed here, but legal risk if you're if you have a, a potential uh, of legal 
uh, exposure for liability or whatever in your business. Okay, so let's go back um, into the classroom and talk more about milestones. And we see that you want milestones allow you, you to actually focus on the things that will create value for yourselves and for your shareholders. Remember what we said before, if you get these 10 things and you've accomplished all of them, you should have a complete set of what needs to happen in order for your business to be a successful, viable, going concern into the future. Which means you take something that's pretty much worthless because it's all just pipe dreams and you turn it into something that is generated has customers, it has a technology that it's supporting, that it can be protected strategically, that it's getting it has financing and bankers and investors, that it has protections from, from legal situations, and that your operation is running smoothly. You have a business, you have created value. So you can focus on systematically reducing the risk that is inherent in, in any sort of a startup. That's what it does for you. It focuses that. It also provides clarity on, on the steps that need to be taken in order for you to succeed. It's not just sort of like mush out there, but it's quite crisp and clear. The whole team also knows what needs to happen. So if I say I'm trying to get the customers to come back and become a repeat customers, Everybody in the van and the truck and back in the office understands that what you're trying to do is reach that milestone, reach that objective, so you have customers that are repeating at least 20% of the time. So when you say, I'm spending some additional time with this customer, even though they've already paid and they're getting ready to leave, because I want them to come back, everyone knows you're doing that for a good reason. And so there's not much conflict about you spending your time doing that when other people in the truck have to spend more time in what they're doing, right? Because everyone, the whole team, knows all of the milestones of what you're trying to accomplish so they can balance what they're doing and what you're doing and they know what to be working on. It also allows you to document your accomplishments. And when you go to raise money, you can say, yes, they were a dollar, we sold shares for a dollar a share whenever we got our initial round of financing. But we've achieved milestones one through three. We've eliminated some market risk. We've gotten our technology up and running and cut that risk down. We have some of our operating decisions made. Um, we have a videographer, for example, or whatever, a technology person. Um, we have a, a chef for our restaurant. Um, any number of things that you say that you've managed to accomplish. And you say, we've got these. So we've eliminated some risk. So now that instead of a dollar a share, we're selling them for $2 a share because now the business is worth more. It doesn't have as much risk. It's the same business plan, but there's less risk in that plan now because you've achieved these milestones, right? And that's why the value goes up. So that's how you think about what's going on and why you're pushing forward with these various milestones. So what do we include in a plan? Typically, Something like 10 or so, um, you go for 18 to 36 months, most of them in the first year, more in the, out, in the close in years than in the out years. Um, I know that some of you, when we're presenting, you have three year milestones, five year milestones. Um, those are good for your long term vision and objectives and strategy, but they're pretty meaningless for investors because investors will figure, feel like They've already taken their risk much earlier on, and they want to know within three months, six months, whatever, that you're getting the risk out of here because they have, they're tying up their money and you're going to come back to them for more. They're not going to give you more money unless the risk has declined in your business. At least that would be the, the basic logic of it. Um, it should be an event. You should describe why it reduces the risk, right? when this milestone is met. It doesn't, don't, if it's, if it's obvious, you don't have to describe it. You know, like if it's meeting, breaking even, you're a restaurant, you say you are breaking even on a given day. Um, uh, the delivery, food delivery, you're breaking even on a particular truck, right? 
So those are the sorts of things that you have to do. Um, you could put real dates, but sometimes you say 30 days from first financing. Because typically what a business like will do if it needs financing to start, needs outside financing to start, is that you'll one of your very first milestones is closing your initial financing of say $200,000. And then you say, once we close our financing, we'll have the money to move forward. So you can step through and say, uh, 30 days from first financing, from the close of the first finance, we'll have our, our restaurant location opened up or acquired, lease signed. 30 days after that, we'll get our chef. 30 days after that, we'll, um, we'll start uh, launching our business. And you can build like 30 days out from first financing. You can also put actual dates. The problem is you're, continu you're continuously changing that um, as financing is delayed or questions come up or due diligence and you're not really starting at the same point in time. So that's something to think about. Most, all of this is important, but one of the important things to consider is that you want the milestones to cover all aspects of your business planning, to startup, to product development, to marketing and sales, operations, business performance, strategic positioning, all of these items. So that's what you want to be, um, be thinking about. It's a complete picture. All right. So let me ask you this one. Another quick poll. Which is a better milestone in your mind? These two um, that I list here. I think I picked the wrong one. Hold on. Not the right one. Um, I can't use this one. I don't have it prepared. We got to go for this one. All right. Which is a better milestone? Which of these two is a better milestone in your mind? Software development begins, or functional specifications for software finalized and approved with a working prototype. More. We need more votes. More votes. More, more, more. Come on. We're killing you here. You're killing me. All right. Broadcast results. Yes, for the most part, you got the, the idea here that having something working, a specifications completed, and a prototype, you have something, you eliminated technology risk. Just starting something doesn't eliminate risk. Just hiring somebody doesn't eliminate risk, right? But getting something done, completing it, does. A milestone accomplishes something, right? Like having the specifications and a prototype ready to go. You have something, it begins to work, people can respond to it. So that's uh, that's one, that's an example of a good milestone versus a less good milestone. Now this is a little, uh, may perhaps challenging. Try this one. Which of these is better? Hire five employees hired or hired an experienced sales manager. More votes, please. More votes, please. I know this is this is a little bit tougher, perhaps. Still working on this. Come on. More, more, more. More votes. More votes, more votes. I know you're chatting with each other or something because I see people changing your votes. All right, take a look. End the poll. Take a look. I won't do that. I'll reopen it. All right. Yes. Why is hiring an experienced sales manager a better milestone than hiring five employees? It seems like five employees is a lot of work you've done. You've done a lot of work. Why is, why is hiring an experienced sales manager a better milestone? Somebody uh, 
answer that for me? I can uh, turn you on. Yes, Sharon. Do you want to talk or are you going to uh, I'll put, turn your mic on? You should have a mic at the top if you like to talk or you can type to me. Chat. You see the mic at the top, Sharon? You can turn that on if you want to talk. Or chat, okay? All right, apparently not. All right. All right, well, let's just continue. Um, the, the logic here is a sales manager is a critical operating hire, somebody that has experience in sales. That is something that's risky. Can I find someone that can handle my business, can have that experience, and bring them into my business when they have other jobs? And when you do that, that takes some sales risk out of your business. Whereas hiring five people is very nondescript. It's easy to hire people. In fact, one of the biggest mistakes people make in milestones is they think milestones are spending money. I signed a lease. Okay, What that means is, yeah, I spent money. It is easy to spend money, right? In fact, there are anti-milestones in a certain sense because what you're doing is you're spending all your money without showing that you're getting anything back for it. In this particular case, you're getting an ex experienced sales manager who's been hired, and that is a good thing. What that means is um, we have managed to bring experience and knowledge into the business on the sales side. And that is an accomplishment. Just spending money, it's not just spending money, you've gotten something for it and you can demonstrate what that is. That's what the poll does for you. So you want to make sure, how many more minutes do I have? Four minutes. Okay, let's go back here. I don't think I have any more uh, polls, which seem to take a lot of time. All right. You want to cover the business, the, the, the milestones in all of these areas. And uh, this uh, PowerPoint, I'll make sure, is posted on um, a Moodle. And I'll also uh, try to get, I'll have this video turned into something that we can upload onto Moodle. Um, so we have milestones covering the risk, all these various parts of the business, same we described before, right? Operations, business planning, and strategy. This is what we look for. Concrete and measurable, close in, first 12 months, and frequent. It's nice to know progress is being checked off every 30 days. You don't have a whole list of things to do 30 days, because then it's like all or nothing. You want to step them out. Um, you want to focus on milestones associated with getting your business going. That is your market, your operation, all that, not just the product. Not just that we're going to design the product, we're going to get the package product purchased, we're going to have somebody manufacture the product, we're going to have, you know, not all product things, but across the whole business, the whole operation. And when they're done, they should provide a complete picture for us of what is being done and what needs to be accomplished. And don't forget the hard stuff, the, the, the important difficult ones that you don't even really want to face because they're so hard. They're the risks that are uh, the, the main paramount risks. Like, for example, does anyone really want this service? Right? This is the, most of us don't want to actually deal with that. We would rather just get set up and give it a try, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, and you never really deal with the fact that there's a good possibility that no one will buy this. Right? You have to take that risk head on and say, how do I figure out and demonstrate that people are willing to buy this and that they're willing to pay the price that I've set up to do this, right? The last test is when you read back over all the milestones, the reader should say, if they do this and they do this and they do this and you check them all off, this is a successful business. I can sell this business if I'm an investor. I can sell my investment in this business for 10 times what I'm putting into it now. Now I'm taking the risks. This management team checks off all these milestones, eliminates all that risk. I can take that business now and I can sell it for 10 times what I put into it. Thank you, management team, you've made me wealthy. That's the story. That's really what's going on as we go through this, um, this process. So here's an example. My last chart, I have a couple minutes, two minutes. 
Um, this is an example of 10 or so milestones uh, for a business. The idea of this business was it was a, um, an application that pets wear a little camera on their collar, and that little camera looks the way they look as they turn, and it basically follows your pet around and broadcasts live over the Internet so you can watch your pet streaming its life to you while it's sleeping or running around the house while you're at work or whatever. That was the idea of this thing. Okay. We'll complete the hardware and software prototype and file preliminary patent. Filing the patent is not a milestone, but it's good to show that you've completed your hardware and software so you can file the patent. Mile one. Not a, filing is not a milestone. Having the patent issued is a milestone. Uh, development and agreement with Google or Android for downloading, so your distribution, part of, the, part of your operating risk. You market test the prototype and you price test it, you demonstrate it, you specify the hardware and, and the cost analysis, you close your initial financing, you develop your product and you get an IPR agreement and uh, intellectual property rights agreement with, your develop, with people who are developing it for you. You do your beta launch, your initial one with some online sales. You get a distribution agreement. This is a longer term thing with Petco to sell this through Petco. You do a commercial product launch. This is a large scale operation now. You sell 100,000 units for a million in sales at a $10 purchase price within 12 months. Notice on the end. So the first year, you're going to launch 100,000 and you're trying to get a million units, $10 million in sales by the end of two years and you're trying to get your worldwide patent issued within three years. And if you do that, you have a business that is worldwide patented and is running at at least $10 million per year with a, with a protected technology. If all these things are done, you have created a business worth probably $100 million. From nothing to $100 million, if you check all of these off. That's the idea, right, that you're trying to accomplish. Okay? Any questions on this discussion of milestones? Sorry for the little bit of a technical glitch at the beginning. Any questions? Comments? Discussion? Anything that you want to bring up? Okay. Don't forget to read for next week the article on um, discovery-driven planning. I posted the, the uh, name of the article on Moodle. You go to the library, you look under, um, uh, not under articles, you want to look under the various journals, you find the Harvard Business Review. Um, it's under uh, Business uh, Complete, I believe it's called Business Select Complete. And then you go to Harvard Business Review and look for this particular issue, which is in 1995, and you can download the article. Okay? Make sure you read that for Monday because we're going to be talking about how we really now think about how we build an actual plan, business plan, financial plan, the, the complete package, um, including our assumptions for financial purposes um, in class next week. Okay? We'll see you all on Monday, and um, have a wonderful weekend. I'll sit here for a few minutes if anyone wants to uh, chat. I see you have a note up there, Sharon. Your, uh, oh, I turned your mic on. That's why. Don't turn your mic on unless you want to hear me. But if I uh, we'll see you all on Monday. Have a great weekend. Take care.